get going here. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, maximizing your hardware basically by simulating a lot of your server workloads. Um, and so uh, I've got a little catchy tagline. Are we building fake cloud? Are we hyperconverging? What are we doing? And what does that really mean? Uh, this is a presentation that was basically started by myself, Ale Radui, and uh, Shannon. Unfortunately, uh, my, my counterparts aren't able to come on stage, but sh shout out to those guys. But anyways, who am I, right? Uh, I describe myself as being uh, someone who loves being challenged to create the impossible and productize it. Um, these are some high-level things that cover who I am, but my name is Kevin Carter. I work for the Rackspace Private Cloud, and I've been with uh, the organization for going on roughly six years now. Uh, for the last year and a half, I was working with the, the group formerly known as the OSIC, um, and uh, my counterparts were Ale, who uh, is an Intel engineer, a brilliant guy, worked on the server simulator part of that, bringing out, uh, making it so that we could deploy medium, large-scale clouds with, uh, without a ton of hardware commitment. And Shannon, he uh, doesn't like public speaking, but he's a brilliant engineer that I've had the pleasure of working with. And so um, I don't know if I don't see him in the crowd, but anyways. Uh, so a uh, quick show of hands, right? Uh, not too many people. I imagine most people are still sleeping. But uh, you know, how many people have been uh, testing OpenStack with DevStack for a little while now? Yeah? Like, sure, everybody? Yeah, maybe? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, and then uh, uh, using a, an AIO, an all-in-one, uh, not using DevStack with some sort of a deployment tool, you know, Cola, OpenStack Ansible, OpenStack Helm, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And how many people have done, you know, an, an entire deployment in a cabinet of gear? One, one cabinet, 22 nodes, you know, a couple switches, a load balancer, et cetera. Uh, and 10 cabinets of gear? 100? Uh, Hey, well, that works. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody who's done a multi-node or a multi-node deployment of OpenStack, you know, like, it's, there's a, a bit of pain that goes with that. You're, you're, dealing with, uh, you're dealing with interesting issues that aren't necessarily tested in the gate. So it's just calling that out. So I, I call that the level of pain of where people are in the, in the world of OpenStack. You have no pain, it worked in DevStack. You hit a button, 70 minutes later it shows up and like, oh my god, I have cloud and it works. Don't reboot it, but you know, it works. Um, and then I have many cabinets of gear. Um, uh, and that's not necessarily a lot of pain, it's just known pain. You know, you, you, you know where things are going wrong, you know where things are, are falling off and what to look for and how to troubleshoot them. Um, so when we were building the tooling for the simulator, we were really focused on these groups, right? Yeah, you know, it worked on a bunch of different hosts. I had a, uh, let's say, less than 10 cabinets of gear, maybe a little bit more. Um, and so we called that actual pain, because uh, you're finding out where the wheels are falling off. Uh, you're running this for a longer period of time, you'll just kind of know it and eventually become known pain. But as you're getting there, it's in those two groups. So with that, uh, the mission that we were, we were given, which we didn't have a choice to accept, was uh, deploying largest environments with minimal hardware commitments, right? We're building out, uh, eventually we built out a 500 node cloud with 50 physical servers. Um, and so we needed to be able to test that uh, kind of workload, that kind of workflow, without actually buying 500 physical servers to go beat on. Um, So, like I said, what we were doing, we were testing networking. Right? I, I made mention of running multiple cabs of gear. You've got networks, everything coming out of uh, interfaces, tagged interfaces, VLANs, et cetera. If you're doing everything on an all-in-one, it's all hairpin in the kernel, and you're not actually testing some of the things that you're going to run into over a longer period of time. You can do some of it with bridging and VTH pairs, but it's not, it's not really a, a, a true test of how your cloud is going to run in prod. Orchestration, as I mentioned, I, I, work at the, uh, I work at Rackspace, working on the OpenStack Ansible project. And so we use Ansible for all of our orchestration needs. So we're orchestrating at greater than one node. Uh, if, you're, if you're running a bunch of bash scripts, or you're running Puppet, or whatever that case may be, if you have one physical box, it's just going to go through linearly and run everything, and everything will be fine. Um, but if you have many nodes, you have to orchestrate your services and your callbacks, your handlers, et cetera. And so we're, we needed to be able to test our tooling at greater than one node. Uh, parallel operations, right? Once the cloud is up and running, you're going to run API calls, Nova list. And it comes back, it gives you some output. But uh, 
that, that doesn't yield a lot of data about how well your, your cloud environment is running. So we wanted to be able to upload uh, millions of objects into Swift, run a whole bunch of Nova commands, build a bunch of VMs, create flavors, delete flavors, uh, upload images, and do that all at the exact same time. And then figure out what is uh, not responding well, what can be improved, what can be tuned, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the environment, it kind of is a no-brainer, but if you're running your cloud for a long period of time, even if you're not using it, it's, it's still doing things. It's sending messages back and forth. It's creating logs. It's filling disks. Uh, uh, you have glare replications uh, going on in the background. And so just running an environment for a long period of time is actually going to yield some sort of usable data for how your deployment of OpenStack is going to run uh, for the foreseeable future. And so why were we simulating our servers? Well, uh, we were uh, trying to do, the, like as the mission said, is develop scale testing. Uh, we want to be able to test the, the, how OpenStack is going to run at 500 nodes without cells in a single region, uh, without host aggregates, et cetera. Uh, we actually want to empower our operations guys. The, the, the ops guys are, are running these things, right? Uh, I'm just a, a developer kicking things around, and I, I get the pleasure of messing with production environments every once in a while when they need, but our ops guys are the guys who are doing all this work. And so if they have a single piece of hardware that they can run tests on or mimic a customer environment or, or uh, you know, test out a new piece of hardware, um, say that they want to partner with a vendor, and the vendor is saying that they've you know, solved world hunger. Like, is that true? Can, can, I, can I validate that without actually spending $10 million in CapEx and, uh, to validate it? So uh, network stress testing, I've, I've kind of beat on this a few times, but networking, networking, networking. That's, uh, with, with, if you can't get networking to, to, to behave in your environment, you're going to have a really bad time. And so that was something that we really focused on with our tooling. And, Developers, like myself, uh, my, my IRC handle is CloudNull because I enjoy breaking things. Um, so if I, my, if I want to be able to test and validate what I'm doing before I actually you know, sell this to my organization and say, yes, you should use this thing. Um, if I want to be able to, to validate my testing. And so using a simulated environment, even if it's just a single piece of hardware, uh, gives you the ability to say that, yes, I've run the code, I've executed it on multiple hosts, it, it does take on all of my compute hosts, or whatever the case may be, and it isn't causing major downtime over a two-week period. Like, uh, so it, it gives you some really good, amazing test feedback without, again, having to, to dive too deeply. Um, what this is not, right? So just to call out real quickly, the, the simulating, uh, simulating server effort is not a new production deployment model, right? So this is uh, something for tests, it's for development, it's for operational tooling, it's for capability testing, it's for vetting hardware, vetting vendors, et cetera. It is not a new deployment capability or, or how you should run clouds in production. Uh, this is also not a new deployment project. We're not competing with Triple O, we don't, we don't want to compete with any of those other projects out there. We're simply taking off the shelf things and building an environment that looks, smells, feels like production. So the core technologies of the simula or server simulator is uh, Ubuntu 1404 and 1604. Uh, in OpenStack Ansible, we now have CentOS 7 and SUSE is coming, um, which has been targeted on uh, the Leap 42. Um, we have a, I think we have a few tumbleweed repos in there right now to make things work, but anyways, all of this testing was on 1404 and 1604. We use Cobbler, and it's, it's off the shelf, it's been around forever and a day. Uh, Libvirt, KVM, and Ansible, right? So uh, it's pretty, pretty stock standard. Um, most of this is powered by you know, some dirty bash scripts, but uh, well, the way it all get, comes together is these are the core technologies. And this wouldn't be a presentation of mine if I didn't show you an ASCII diagram of things, um, which is the host showing Ethernet devices. Everything is a, on a bridge. I've got HAProxy, LibVirt, Cobbler, and about 14 VMs running. So we're building out an HA cluster with our infra nodes. That's hosting all of our APIs, um, MariaDB with Galera, uh, RabbitMQ in a multi-master setup. Um, all of the schedulers are there. Uh, we're also, we have a deploy node where everything is orchestrated out of the single deploy node, um, which is, happens to be a VM. 
uh, with two compute nodes. That gives us the, uh, the base capability of doing live migration between our two nodes. Like, uh, does this live migration technique work? Swift, uh, three nodes there, which actually has got uh, about five drives each, and so we're, and then we have a replication schema for three objects per, per or three replicas per object, and so we're actually testing a production like uh, Swift environment with a replication network, et cetera. Uh, Cinder, uh, we have two nodes there. Both of them will come up by default using Cinder with uh, uh, logical volumes, but we also tested Ceph and a few other backends too. And then a log node. Right, through, throughout all of this stuff, all, all of these things are generating logs, and so we're, we're actually sending all of our logs over uh, using our syslog, and they're aggregated there, and then we have, um, there's some external tools you can use, Elasticsearch, um, Logstash, Kibana, to visualize those logs, but they're all being collected on an actual logging node, and uh, which is you know, creating load, is creating uh, network latency in the environment, and uh, gives you a more prod-like experience. So, the, yeah, where do we go from here, right? We've got a, a single multi-node AIO. We've got uh, roughly 12 physical servers. If I were to kick one of these for you and give you SSH access to it, uh, if you were just to poke around, it would look, smell, feel like real servers. We're not, uh, there's nothing in there that uh, would give you the impression that this is not uh, a production rack of gear that I'm, I'm running all of this on. So, uh, within the OSIC group, we decided that we were going to multi-node our multi-node AIO. And that is to, we took 50 servers that were all kicked with Ironic and then did the exact same thing. Uh, so we had 50 servers uh, all kicked with Ironic. The Ironic deployment that we used for that was uh, out of the OSIC cloud and it was all on a single flat network. Uh, but like I was saying, we're trying to test real, real production-like environments. And so we created a VXLAN mesh across all of those nodes that gave us 10 tagged VXLAN interfaces. And then we plugged all of that into our, our VMs and bridges, et cetera. So every host effectively becomes a, a switch. We're not running anything on the host except for virtual machines. And we're deploying everything into virtual machines uh, to build our large scale clouds. So this is the simulator work. This is um, Ale, uh, primarily worked on the simulator. But in the end, what we did was we were testing system management of greater than or equal to 500 compute nodes. Um, so we had a, a three-node control plane, Swift, Cinder. Um, we also had a, a Ceph in the background, and a few other services all running all at the same time. And it was for uh, targeting 500 compute nodes. Uh, this is also using, like I said, KVM with nested virtualization in it. And so we're getting the same instructions in our, in our virtualized compute nodes as we are on our physical ones. We're testing all of our technology stack, right? We're, like I mentioned before, it's Cobbler, Ansible, uh, 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 Libvirt, et cetera. And so we needed to be able to vet our current technology stack. You know, is this going to work? Is it, does, it, does it actually scale? Uh, we, we know it, we, we've run production deployments with this, but like where do, where does, where do the wheels fall off and, and how do we make this better for the community? Um, with OpenStack at 500 nodes, you have a ton of messaging going on. Like, you've got RabbitMQ just getting beat by your compute nodes over and over and over and over again. And so we ended up needing to, to do a ton of tuning to make our RabbitMQ clusters work in a way that uh, they weren't going to continually fall over. And then proper failure scenarios, right? So we actually wanted to be able to, to create an environment where we could introduce human error, network latency, um, problems with, uh, uh, hardware problems, a whole bunch of other things. And so this is uh, how we w went about going. Uh, the simulator architecture, I'll let you stare at that for a few minutes there, but uh, you know, it's black square boxes with other rectangles and dotted lines, but they, uh, it's the same exact thing as my ASCII diagram from before. It's Nix to, that, as to VLANs, but uh, in our case, for our test, it was VXLANs. Um, uh, going over a single physical network uh, to virtual machines and simulated on uh, up to 50 hosts is what we did this on. Oop. So uh, as I mentioned just a second ago, we built out a single deployer, three controllers, three Ceph, two Swift, two networking, one logging, and 50 total simulators running 10 VMs each, which all were all compute nodes. Uh, we basically 
the, the hardest part of getting all of that to work was using, getting the VXLAN mesh up and running. And so what we did for that, actually, is uh, in OpenStack, we have, the met, we have metadata. And as you're provisioning your nodes in Ironic, you're putting a public key on everything. And so we used your public key to generate some magic numbers, which then become your VXLAN group. And then so a user, an individual user, would have 10 isolated VXLAN networks. And then we could keep giving out our environments to other people. We had 250 nodes in Ironic total. We used 50, and then there were other groups using uh, some allotment of nodes in that. And we didn't want our traffic to be impeding on, on what they were doing. Now, we still, in Ironic, had only a single flat network, which is what our entry points were. But all of the tests that we did were over VXLAN. Uh, the, uh, the sim or, yeah, we, we built out our environments, again, using the OpenStack Ansible code base. Um, and uh, eventually, we, we did this all on a, a total of 100 servers. Um, but our, our main focus of the test was 50 at 500. So the large scale simulator tests, right? Um, like, what were our findings on that? And it was that everything is, in fact, awesome. No, uh, that's actually not true, right? We knew that the VMs were going to come up well. We knew everything was going to, to deploy OK. Uh, we validated that work, and then we validated that we could get everything up and running in, in, a, in a reasonable period of time. Where things fell over, though, is our usual suspects. We've got MariaDB, uh, Galera, RabbitMQ, Nova, and our own config management. We found some issues in how Ansible was performing at 500 node scale when we did a fork, well, when we set forks to 500. That was our original test. Like, can I do all things at once simultaneously across the entire cloud? Uh, the answer is no. Um, so uh, we had to call that back to about 25 to 50, depending on what our workloads look like and what we were actually uh, deploying at that time. The, uh, some of the issues that we ended up fixing uh, were Galera. It had uh, the, the bin log was filling up way too fast. And so we needed to go out and uh, set it was just tunables to, to make uh, that actually function a whole lot better. Uh, InnoDB buffer pool size was another one that we had to, to tune up. Um, RabbitMQ, we, like I said, we did a ton of tuning in RabbitMQ. We actually ended up tuning, well, we diving into the, the EVM inside of Erlang. And so we can figure out how it was running and how many threads we needed, how many workers we needed, what was the memory footprint of all of those workers. Um, and then we, we moved all of that code and every, all of our learnings into the OpenStack Ansible code base. Um, so we, we tried to upstream everything we could where we could. Uh, we wrote blog posts, et cetera. The uh, NF contract max needed to be increased for HA proxy under, under that many nodes um, and under significant load, under uh, basically the, the barrage of tests and scenarios that we're attempting to do against our clouds. The, uh, we had to throttle back our forks, like I was saying, because uh, we, were, we were killing our environment with effectively distributed SSH. Uh, not, and it wasn't really necessarily killing the environment. It was just that we were getting SSH errors, and Ansible was just continue cruising along, uh, giving you a, an inconsistent result. And uh, IP management, which I put under config management, uh, inside of uh, these projects, whether they be uh, OpenStack Ansible or a few others, we're creating networks and then taking note of the IP space, which goes into inventory, and that becomes unruly when you have uh, a lot of nodes, uh, especially when you're managing them with two different types of processes. Uh, we were kicking the VMs, uh, and then after we would kick the VMs, we would run their OpenStack Ansible deployment. And we didn't, we didn't want things to overlap or kill or, or, or run into different problems. And so we were allocating different subnets across the cloud for these things. But it still, it, it was a little bit unruly. So we could do with uh, some improvement in overall IP management. But um, actually, from here, I am, uh, I'm actually going to do a live demonstration so, uh, of one of our environments up and running and work through one of our scenarios uh, on how we, how we did this. And so I'm actually going to be doing this on Pike. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, we're going to test Swift. So, uh, so anyways, uh, I got a little latency here. But I'm going to connect to the environment. And if you're not familiar with Vert Manager, right, it's a machine manager over uh, which I can connect to my host over SSH. I've got that pre-configured here. And if the internet works, 
Great success. All right, so I've got my machines running, uh, two sender, uh, two computes, deploy node, infra node, uh, logging nodes, et cetera. And you can treat this like a, like a DRAC, console ILO, um, so I can get access to the nodes themselves and you know, uh, begin playing around with them. Our environment, as you can see, is uh, Ubuntu 16.04.2 at this point in time. And to uh, dive into the terminal here, So I've got my environment up and running, and this is my hardware. Uh, you just see a ton of vert going on. Um, I've got Swift 1 that I'm going to jump in and beat on. And this is my deploy node, uh, which has got the OpenStack Ansible code base stuck on it currently. Uh, and coming back up. I'm going to log into Horizon and just show you uh, the cloud is, in fact, operational. Oh, dead air. Sorry. Um. And so, like I said, this is running on uh, 403 Forbidden. This is running on Pike, and so I may have upset the gods of live demonstrations. Come on. There we go. All right, so uh, we are going to be doing, like I said, a Swift test, and so we're going to Jump into our little containers here with object storage. Last pass can go away. <laughs> uh, right now I have no containers. I've got basically an idle cloud. Like I was saying before, you're not getting a whole lot of data if you just run one thing or if you just, and, and, and clouds are amazingly easy to keep online if you don't use them. Um, and so we are going to come over here and we're going to re-kick VM Swift 2. So I'm going to destroy my uh, environment in a, in a way that it probably doesn't want to be uh, uh, by corrupting the disk. Um, and so that's going to force my node to go down. And actually, come, when it comes back up, it will pixie boot. Um, which I jump into. Swift 2. And of course. seem I've made an error. But, uh, and then we're, well, we'll go ahead and uh, show you Swift is, in fact, working. Uh, Swift recon. I've got three nodes. They're operational. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll shut down. And I can actually uh, come back over to my Swift host. He's killing me. And like we can actually see the, the node come back online. Uh, and then from our deploy node, uh, there we go. OpenStack Ansible. We can uh, begin the, the process of uh, rebuilding our little environment here uh, using our OpenStack Ansible playbooks. 
which is going to take a, uh, just a second to come back on 100% uh, online. Uh, within, while that's all running, uh, we can start uploading objects into our Swift container. And so we're going to start uh, just creating a log stream that's continually uploading uh, all of the logs from one of our various Swift nodes into our environment. If I refresh this with a, a bit of luck, we should have a, yes, our test container is there. We're at var, log, et cetera. Uh, these are all of our logs, and as our, as I turned off checksumming, uh, the checksumming difference in the log up or in the Swift upload command itself, and so we should be seeing these logs increase over a period of time as the various playbooks are executing. Um, and all of this is happening at the same time. Um, and under our, uh, if we look at the load on the box, we can see my, I've got 40 cores, and it's, uh, it's relatively, relatively idle, but we're using a lot of memory uh, at this time. So we're, we're able to provide ourselves an environment that is, is running various deployments, re, retooling one of our nodes that I, I busted, um, uploading a bunch of objects into our Swift container, and, uh, and, and staying online in a way that our, like a production environment would. Um, and uh, this is going to take a, a few seconds here. But as, as these things uh, continue on, I'm just jump back over here uh, into the presentation. You know, uh, so to answer the original question, like, uh, are we building a fake cloud? Are we hyper-converging our testing? What are we doing? Are we building our ops tools? Well, uh, you know, we're doing all of the above. We're doing both, um, and so. We really want uh, to, to empower our operators, deployers, and everyone else to take advantage of what the OSIC did with the operational tooling, uh, the server simulator, and what is the, now known as the multi-node AIO, uh, so that they can actually move some of, their, some of, some of the hardware commitments that they have to uh, buy into uh, to uh, improve their overall scale testing, their agility, their capabilities, uh, and, and, and vet hardware vendors, right? If you're partnering with a vendor and they're going to send you some hardware, but you don't have 500 nodes to, to test with, you can take 10 and then put some workloads in there underneath all of that to, to, to create a, create a, a more production-like cloud. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I don't want you to sit here and stare at a black terminal the entire time. We can circle back on that, but I'd love to, if you guys have questions on, on what we did and how we did it, um, I'd, I'd love to answer those. Um, I have uploaded the slides there. Yeah, any, any questions? Anything you'd like to see in the environment? Uh, are you using nested KVM? Yes, we are. Yeah, we're using nested KVM, um, and that's uh, allowing us to, yeah, like I was saying, give our, our Compute nodes and our VMs that we're building the same instruction sets as we would in a in a in a, in a production like environment. Yeah, yeah, by all means. Yeah, sure. Uh, so two questions. Uh, one question about the hardware configuration of the nodes. Yeah. How it looks, especially the storage. Uh, and the second one, uh, what was the tool used to put the workload on your test environment? So we built out all of our test scenarios using Ansible. Uh, there are various different Ansible playbooks, and they're currently in the, the OSIC GitHub under our, I believe it's under our, the QE section. Uh, but they have built out a ton of different scen uh, test scenarios that were uh, doing similar things that I, I attempted to do here um, during the live demonstration as well as others for um, live migrations, uh, upgrades, lots of upgrades, rolling replaces of nodes, running multiple different operating systems simultaneously, uh, 1404 and 1604 side by side under the same code base. Um, uh, as for the hardware configurations, uh, for this specific piece of hardware, uh, it's, a, 
uh, it's Intel S3700s and a RAID 10 uh, with Xeon E5 processors. And then um, we, for our VXLAN mesh, which was uh, enabled us to use the VXLAN mesh, was uh, X, uh, Intel X710 NICs, uh, which gave us uh, VXLAN offloading. Without that, Without, actually, it's really, uh, that's kind of a good uh, point to make. With VXLAN, if you don't have VXLAN offloading, you're actually going to have a very poor performance time. Right? It's, it comes down to a single channel and a gigabit per second per node. So you can have a 100 gigabit network on the backside, but if you don't have a card that can handle or so give you proper VXLAN offloading, you're going to run into terrible, awful slowdowns. Um, and you won't necessarily know why, because you've invested in hardware. It's just it doesn't have the instruction sets to deal with it. But the, the Mellanox ConnectX Pros, um, I think 3 Plus, as well as the uh, Intel X710 have those. There's a few other cards out there. Those are the only ones I am familiar with. But our, our hardware is uh, Intel X710. Okay. okay. And the storage was on, on SSDs? They were on SSDs, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, for our, our, our uh, Ceph testing, they had two SSDs for root, two for general, and then a, a RAID 10 of 17, 1500K SAS drives. Okay. Oh, not RAID 10, but yeah, a bunch of drives. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, of course, of course. Any other questions? Yeah, did yes. Yeah. No, we did not. Um, we, we, we played with cells. We really wanted to use cells, but we, uh, the end result was that we, we didn't find that we needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used regions, though. Uh, once we got over 500, we decided to create multiple regions. It could be, a lot of people describe regions as you know, Chicago, Dallas, Virginia, but we, we were doing rack one, or row one, row two, row three and then um, using a single keystone overarching everything so that it was a unified identity. We would have liked to use federation, but we ran into some usability problems with it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, get there. It'll get there. It's getting there, actually. It's, com it's coming a, long, a very long way. But yeah, cells, no, we didn't. And cells v2 is not necessarily 100% supported across the board. Don't be shy. Beat me up. Any other questions? Uh, uh, well, our, our, our playbooks are, are done, and our stuff is still uploading. Um, and if I scroll up, I'm hoping to find that there's no errors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so we can come back to validating our servers and know that we have three Swift hosts still. So yeah, we we're, we're uh, effectively uh, went through, nuked one of our nodes, continued to upload during the entire rebuild process, and then reran our playbooks while we were continuing to upload. And our cloud is now back to being perfectly idle. But uh, yeah, that, yeah, anyways. Anything else? No? Yes? Well, I will uh, get off the stage and stop talking and let them get back to uh, being on time. All right. Thank you.